Hello everybody and welcome to episode 10 in my Carthaginian campaign let's play for Imperator Rooms 1.3 Livy update. Now in the last episode we focused kind of internally again and built up our economy, increasing our income, reducing our aggressive expansion, reducing our tyranny and things like that. But then we were also thrust into two separate wars, one of them called in to aid our allies of Thuria against Epirus, Corsaira, Aetolia, and a bunch of other Greek city-states and smaller states in Greece. That was kind of just a token war. We didn't really fight them too much. We just sent some armies over to deal with, or rather, sent some armies to defend the southern tip of Italy against Epirus. Once their armies were defeated, they peaced out. We weren't the war leader. We didn't really have much of a say in it. The other one was of our own volition. We attacked Umbria, who had kind of risen up on the coastline of Etruria and Tuscia in northwestern Italy, and we managed to put them down the ground pretty handedly, as well as their ally Ilvatia, who was more kind of up here. So that meant that we grew our kind of coastline from just one territory, which we previously had, to now having a whole stretch of coastline and uh, a little uh, multiple ports that we could land at if we needed to with our navy. Uh, the only things I did also in between episodes was I just colonized this little territory here. Uh, I had a look at ways to colonize these two, but unfortunately we just need to... It's a bit too messy for culture, I just need the culture to kind of take hold. But luckily, uh, religion is really taking hold in a big way now in a lot of places. So if we have a look, the dark purple is obviously my religion, Canaanite. And uh, Sicily is almost entirely Canaanite now, which is awesome, and we're encroaching further onto Italy, which is awesome because these are actually cities, so those took a while, and they've finally taken hold now properly. So when it turns to your color, it means that's 50%, uh, over 50% is your dominant culture, or it actually just means dominant religion, so I shouldn't say 50%, it just means dominant religion, because uh, you could have four or five religions all competing, but this means that we're the dominant religion in all of these little territories here, so just a few smaller uh, non-cities to go, so all the cities in Sicily are ours uh, properly, so that means that soon, once we kind of finish off maybe a little bit here, we'll change the policies to be um, culture conversions, and then that'll create Canaanites, because culture is a big problem for us. Uh, we don't have much of our culture anywhere in any of these places that we've captured, you know, we've, we've taken up here, we've taken here and here, and we don't have any of that culture, even in Corsica, it's like not ours. But culture takes a little bit longer. You got to get that religion established first. At least that's how I feel you have to do it. And that's what we have been doing. So the other thing is we also finished the Pearl of Africa mission. And now we have to decide which one we're going to do next. So the Iberian struggle is going to be about pushing into Iberia. And I think you get some claims and stuff. I kind of just had like a brief look. I didn't go through the whole mission. I just like opened it up and then looked through the first top, like the first top few things. I don't want to spoil it to myself too much, but I do think it's like really annoying the way you don't know anything about it. So I wanted to at least kind of be sure. I don't think we're going to go Iberia first. The Ages of Africa seems pretty interesting. This is more about like solidifying Africa and integrating all the nations down here. Um, some of which you need to have them as your clients, some of which you don't. So we definitely have to go to war with like Mesizilian, uh, Mesiz Mesizilia and probably Mauritania. Naval supremacy then is about building up your navy, but I don't think I really want to do that either. So I'm not too pushed on any of these. I'd love another type of Pearl of Africa one where we just build our economy up. But I think we're going to go with Aegis of Africa. So as our trade empire expands, which it has been doing, uh, with more and more colonies and ports abroad, our ambitions in Africa have withered. We must secure our footing... Excuse me. <clears throat> We must secure our footing at home and protect our backs from uprisings and raids by unruly tribes before we can once again turn our gaze across the sea. I mean, that's actually really perfect. Exactly exactly what I wanted to do, really. We want to focus on our economy and growing stuff before we look to finish off Rome or... Well, we've never been at war with Rome, actually. Attack Rome or go into uh, Iberia. We're 51 years into the game now and there's about uh, 220 to go. So when you think of it that in those terms, we need to like start speeding up. But I just got to get that economy in place so that while we're at war, we're still gaining income in future. Because currently, if we go to war, we kind of even out and then our economy stalls. So it might have been a bit of a mistake on my part ever going to war while not. You should always be making a little bit of money in a war, I feel. Uh, if not just from your regular economy, but at least from the raids and navies and things like that. So... So I think that's one what we're going to do. Uh, the mission will be considered complete when Western North Africa is subjugated or conquered. So let's start this one. Boom. So I don't think I'm actually going to begin any of these. Uh, I haven't read them all. Like I said, I just read the kind of first few. Something that it wants us to do largely is to 
integrate pretty much all of the little vassals we have on the coastlines. We now have Thinisit as well. We'll probably leave them alone. They don't mind. They don't really matter. But the ones like Kerquon, uh, Thapsis, uh, Leptis Minor. Uh, I don't know about Emporia and Tripolitania, but we could now raise the. We could raise the opinion of all these guys and integrate them all. To be honest, there's no real reason why not. They've been great though. They have actually, especially um, import. What are the? Is, is it Emporia? No, Tripolitania. They've been really great. Their armies have like gone far and wide to help us out. I think it's because they've got a considerable navy. Uh, so I think that's kind of what we're going to focus on. And in the meantime, we have our new uh, Safet, Yadamil Keshebeli the Iberian. 71 years old. He's a pretty old guy. Um, but he's just been elected, you know, a few, uh, basically like six or seven months ago. And uh, he'll be in power for the next while. So the civics are in power, so we want to kind of empower them as well. And get some reductions in building costs. But for now, we want the money to go up. It looks like money is going down. I don't know if those of you can see it. It's obviously very small. But it's a negative sign. But we are actually making plus 24 now. So making good money. Um, another very last thing then to mention is the fleet. Are we paying the fleet? We're actually not paying the fleet right now. The fleet's coming into dock. And what I plan on doing is taking Boods Badona off his army here. Let's just replace this with someone else like Masinissa Badona. Keeping the family happy. And then this guy will change him when he's ready to be Boods on this army. And Boods is going to go out, gain himself some popularity, and try to establish himself. Because in the future, we're going to have some wars. So it'd be good to start raising up that military faction support. Um, so we might actually get someone... We might have to replace Drusus um, Blossii and get someone else in who's actually a militarist. Although I don't feel we have many militarists. We have Decius Blossii, who's actually not part of the family, unfortunately. We'll get him in, although his health is... Quite low, isn't it? 36%. Yeah, he's kind of old. But, uh... Mm, yeah, I don't really have a problem with that, I guess. I mean, he's like literally the, the only military dude I could put in here. Uh, who has good oratory. So, let's just get him in there. And that'll just give... Apparently nothing. I don't understand how that's working. That's great. Good stuff. All right, I don't know why that's happening. The Asia of Africa. As our trade empire expands with more and more colonies and ports abroad, our ambitions in Africa have withered, etc., etc. So that's actually interesting. We get country modifier Asia of Africa until the end of game, but it'll disappear when the mission is uh, completed. We get 20, plus point twenty for integration speed and subject opinion of us. So it's helping us out with these integrations that we want to do. So yeah, let's begin. So let's go improve opinion. I think the Senate are going to be behind us with pretty much all of these. Just improve opinion with all of these guys. We have the political influence to do so. Okay, so those are all of our subjects, I think. Uh, I'd be tempted to do it with others as well. I had a good look as well at maybe what we could do to integrate the Italians at some point. Again, I just don't know how we can ever do that. It seems like we need to be really, really powerful to be able to do it. So even just for these small states, which is kind of crazy, but that's just the way it's got to be. To turn an ally into a client, it just seems like that's what you'd have to do. Or just straight up attack them, which we might end up doing. But for now, we'll just leave them. They're actually pretty good allies for Italy, at least. Maybe if Rome is dealt with, then we don't need them anymore. We can even just let them go or attack them or look to client them in future. All right. So it wants us to do either mutiny of the Berbers or integrate the, uh, the Muslimani, Musulami, right? So Musulami is actually a considerably sized nation right here. And it says... Carthage owns at least territory with this. Da, da, da. The rewards stop. So these will stop being a tribute and they'll become a client state. So we're not actually integrating them. We're just making them a client. Because right now they're a tribute. So that's actually pretty good. We could do that. But that'll actually put our relations over the limit. Because clients do count. And we have four allies. So we'll ha that's why they're a problem. Those like little city states right now for me. So I have to think about that. Uh, the other thing is the mutiny of the Berbers. This one says completing this task will result in a war between Massilia and Carthage. Carthage gains Massilian tamed until March 521. Primary culture 10%, 10%. And our, our Safet will gain popularity. So I'd like to do that one if we get the military guys in charge. So we don't need to do any of this stuff just yet. Uh, a tale of four cities. These are to, like, if we integrate all the coasts, this will work. 
Same with this kind of thing. So we'll leave it for now. We'll leave it for now. There's not much to do with it for now. But that integration speed is going to help us. So that's kind of what we're using right now. So five improve opinions. And we got a bonus to 20 opinion as well because there are subjects. So this should go a little bit quicker. We have appeasing stance. Uh, changing it to domineering stance would also increase that. And it will cost 30... 30 political influence. Right now we have appeasing stance, which is aggressive dis expansion decay, which is pretty nice. And improve relation cost is cheaper. So what I'll do is do some final improve relations with maybe the two biggest ones here. So these guys and these guys. Do Rome need an improvement to relations? Not really. I've also noticed that Lusonia and Visaya Turdetani and Turdlia. Turdlia? I've become quite big. These are big nations. Lusonia as well is currently invading here. Illyricavonia. And they're also invading down here. So they look like they're going to be the big Chad in Iberia. Uh, as is Visaya. So they might be worth talking to and getting on our side in future or something like that. I don't know. Um, other than that, I don't know who... <clears throat> God, my voice keeps going. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it might be worth improving the opinion of these guys, but I don't really know if we'll have to just attack them in the future or not. Uh, Carthage or a subject owns the African coast. Mm, I don't think so. Alright, so, enough dilly-dallying. Let's switch this then to domineering stance. Um, we'll use that to do our integrations as quickly as possible. We'll gain quite a lot doing this of territory. The culture is all Punic down this way as well, as is the religion. Um, but it's not for Musulamia, so that would be a weird one when we get them as a client, if we wanted to integrate them. They wouldn't actually help us out too much. Alright, we're making good money now. We have to wait before we can put boots on the navy, because uh, we can't change this commander for a while. Until 501. October 501, so we have to wait for a bit. Actually, maybe improving relations with Macedon would have been a good idea as well. I hope they aren't hostile to me. It's We only would have saved three influence. It's not that big of a deal. All right, just improve opinion with them as well. Just keep everyone chilled. Oh, the I meant to mention, the only other thing I did in between was I deleted some forts. I still have quite a lot, but I did delete like six. Uh, to be honest, I could probably get rid of one of these here. Uh, so province, oh yeah, that was the other thing. There was a few there I wanted to delete and here, but the province is disloyal, so I actually can't. But it's gaining loyalty, so it'll get better. Uh, three provinces are losing loyalty, three are gaining. But it's all good. At this point, it's all good. Um, okay, so there's really not much else to do, other than I had said that I wanted to build everything I can in this province, the province of Carthago. So we've got a farm there, we need another farm here. Choosing sides. As many of the more veteran members of our blessed political institution know, youth is a wonderful state of joy, experience, and most importantly, gullibility. Shelves Bodona has recently emerged fresh-faced onto the political scene, espousing the rhetoric of the religious faction. God, I can't stop burping. People mentioned this actually in the comments before. I apologize. <laughs> I don't know what's up with my tummy sometimes, but I, I don't know. <laughs> I try to burp off mic to help. Anyway. <clears throat> Uh, espousing the rhetoric of the religious faction, like vultures to a corpse, those desperate to sway shelves to their cause has descended. have descended, each using their cunning to try and recruit him. Perhaps it behooves our Safet to step in and show shelves the true path. That's interesting, so we shouldn't interfere. He'll gain 60 conviction for the military faction. Or he'll gain 60 conviction for the play. We want more militaristic dudes. He's not very military minded but he, he could be good to just put in office at some point and help out as a military man I don't know we'll do it anyway he's 17 I like having more more military the better although he has six finesse this does seem like civic would be actually the best okay we'll go civic I changed my mind just because I was just thinking about it unless you're putting like a military guy uh, here there's and he's finally he has his number now it actually doesn't really benefit anything, right? So there's no point having a military guy who's good at finesse down here. Like, it doesn't do anything. 
I don't think. So it's good to just make him civic. And that way, a minor addendum. Melkashtart uh, Melka has <laughs> suggested a small addendum to an often referred uh, reference law. Just pause time. Pertaining to the rights of the common folk, it should only be a small effort to push this through the Senate. No time, not this time, or yes. Yep, 10 political influence and we get 6 stability. I'll take it. I'll bloody well take it. A turnum is losing food and loyalty, but it's only, I think it's only one, yeah, it's one territory. It's not much we can do there. Oh, yeah, the other thing I wanted to do then is also save my money for technologies, right? So we'll do the entire building of this province, and then we'll do technologies. So we've got, let's get that. To be honest, thinking about it, now having thought about it a bit more, it seems like slave estates would be the smartest thing to build rather than have, and have like as least free men as possible. That way we just stack commerce and tax. That's probably the probably the right thing to do rather than have any manpower in this in this area at all. So we'll go with slave estates. Yeah, that makes way more sense. I don't know what I was thinking before. Actually, this is a mine, isn't it? This could be a mine. Yep. So what will the mine even give us? I should probably look. Pop capacity and slaves needed for surplus is less. Okay, that's good. And each of these costs quite a bit. Oh, you know what? <sighs> Let's cancel them. And um, I'll activate that civic power thing. This thing. So 15% reduction in build cost. Okay, so food there. Food here. Slave estates pretty much everywhere else. Alright, we're just a little bit short on that one. Cool, so we got an extra building, you know, activating that, basically. Alright, I think that's the right thing to do, I don't know. Um, like, these barrack, that barracks here and here probably isn't needed anymore, but we'll leave it for now, obviously, I don't want to be deleting buildings. And now we'll just keep stacking buildings in here when we get to. Good, little investments into building, which is nice to see. The civic faction are in power and government. Yadam looks like, commission the building of the farms, the mines, the slave estates. Let's really prop Carthage up. That's what he's pushing through the Senate this time around. Now, can we get uh, Bodes on the fleet? There he is. Bodes Badona, 20 years old, 11, Marshal. He's going to lead that fleet. Um, he's on the hunt for capturing ships. Which is good. So if we notice and we spot any pirates, we'll send them out. He has the entire fleet to himself right now. He's probably quite the powerful, becoming quite the powerful man, young man. I wonder is it worth uh, paying the fleet? How much would it be? Worth about seven extra gold. So we'll leave it off for now. I guess we'll just pay it if we notice a pirate fleet. But by then it can often be too late. You should really pay and patrol. But it's okay. It's fine. Scorned family. Okay, so the Hanids are currently scorned. I have to keep an eye on that then in future. And this guy is standing on territory that is not good for him. Uh, something else I also noticed in between sessions is that Rome has... I was checking their clients. They have Frenatia, or whatever, Frentania. Then they also have Pelignia, but they also have Massilia. So this single city-state, Massilia, out here... Uh, you know, who've been dethroned, deseated from where they should be. They're owned by and protected by Rome, as are Abria out here. So just a just a little update onto Rome's current standings with things. You know, they are shrinking in quite a bit, I would say. And they're kind of stagnant, but they do have some, you know, a little bit of allies around the place. And they have some guarantees going on as well in the north. Oh shit, there's Lusonia. Look, they've taken that territory. Wow, yeah, big chunk. So they're up to... Uh, 44 territories. 44. Okay, it looks a little bit bigger than I thought it would be. I thought it would be like 70 or 80. Empress want to trade. Absolutely. After our, we killed about 10,000 of their men. No problem. Happy to do it. I, it was just a token war. I understand the situation. <clears throat> uh, okay, how are we doing? We've got a good amount of money. Money is coming in nicely. So we've already got barracks here. Is that it then? Everything is then built in this place. 
the integrations haven't begun yet. So that's fully built. Now we just have to build in the cities themselves. And like I said, I was going to focus uh, heavy on the libraries. Maybe a little bit on marketplaces. So that's four markets, five libraries. Uh, what else? Maybe... I don't know if we need the slave mills, really. What else could we do? Oh, yeah, the uh, academies. That's it. So there we go. Big investments. Smartening everyone up. And that should actually help commerce as well, then, a little bit in the long run. The art of the deal. Members of the mercantile faction have something of a reputation regarding the price of their support. It came, therefore, as no surprise at all, when Malchus Barca... Oh, man, he must be so old now. 70 years old. Leader of the patricians of Carthage. Approached us with a glint in his eye. We seem to share similar goals. We'd be more likely to back our... No. Unnecessary expense or offer them more. Carthage owes the mercantiles. And we lose 400. That's crazy. Huh. This is uh, kind of annoying. Alright, maybe I'll have to cancel some of my buildings then. Do we have enough now? No, not quite. They'd be more likely to back us, or we could, oh, they could owe us a favor. Oh, no, 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 sorry. We just pay more, and we'd owe them a favor. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll just pay them, and they'll back um, increase the chance to backing us. We seem to share similar goals, I guess. Draining my treasury. God damn it, man. Oh, well, at least we're building in places now. It feels good, because before we weren't for a very long time. We're up to 28 income now, which is nice. So let's have a look. The Tale of Four Cities. So Leptis Minor and Thapsus need to be integrated for us to be able to progress this. And this one would be Emporia and Tripolotania. So we're working on that as well. I actually didn't realize that. That's nice. I, I actually did not realize that. That's good. So as they're... We need to get them to 190. A lot of them are on 162 right now. Uh, not sure how much they gain each month. No way. They only gain one each month. That's crazy. They only gained one that time. I thought it was a bit more than that. We could also give them a gift to get the extra 20. Yeah, it is. Only, oh, no, that was two that time. So, yeah, 25. So, yeah, we have to wait until they get to 175. And then we'll throw them some gifts, and then we can start the integrations. So, that should be good. All right, let's start building in this city as well. This has, like, a court of law, which is totally unnecessary. That adds loyalty, but this the home province is always loyal. So we don't need that building. And it's got two forts here, which I also think is a bit overkill. So let's get rid of one. Uh, there's no port here, but either either way, this is like a commerce kind of province. So we'll just build up the build up the libraries. It's tempting to go with something like a foundry so that when we if we recruit here, like heavy infantry and stuff, they come out a bit more experienced. And the population output is increased. That's pretty tempting. I didn't realize it gave you pop output. Mm. Alright, we'll just leave it for now anyway. Hundred and eighty one. Awesome. Okay. Oh wow, now we're making thirty four. Jeez. Uh omen. You can call down a new omen. So we're up to 60% religious unity. Let's go with national commerce, 24%. Now, previously I went with the citizen output. We'll go with commerce because I think this is largely research. Although I do think it improves commerce a little bit. I should really just do a test on that. But we'll do straight up commerce this time, Melkart. So we're making 33 from commerce. And we'll see what we get next month from commerce. So Lucius Volminus died. Oh no. Freak accident. Uh, he was a Carthaginian minor character and a researcher. Okay. Tabnit Hanid. Oh my god. So we'll have to get Igorus in there, although I think he's super old as well. Yeah, he's 50% health, but at least he'll help the uh, tech for a little while. So we're making 39 from commerce now, 40 in total. So we're up to 40 income. That's pretty bad. That's pretty good. I was going to say it's not bad. Don't see any pirates right now, so we'll just keep the guy on the fleet. Because he'd be a good researcher, but I'll just keep him on the fleet for now. 
Uh, okay, so let's start investing in buildings. Actually, well, now we need to start thinking about technologies, I think. So we'll wait till we get a bit more money. Our techno Each technology is 420 now. I mean, it's so expensive. But I believe that as we improve the happiness of our citizens, we'll just get more and more money. Uh, so religious proceeding. A struggle between the religious echelons of our society and the peasants has recently come into light as the populace at large feel like the religious ceremonies are inaccessible and distant. So we've read this many times. Um, this is where you can either go with the priests and say, like, keep the people out of it, or kind of appease both, or just go with the people. So, um, this will give us stability and reduction in national unrest, but the omen power and duration will be worse. I'm tempted to do that because unrest is still pretty rife in places like this. It's up to one here, and that slows down... Actually, doesn't seem to be too bad at all. It was just that one. This one city seems to be having more than any other city here. But maybe we won't do it then. The priests will be left alone, and we'll lose stability. We'll just appease both. I think appeasing both is just kind of the nicest. But it's the least powerful of the three. Um, all right, we're up to 171. Once these numbers hit 175, then we can do it. By the way, I never mentioned it. I don't think I ever mentioned it before, but. I modded the game, uh, just aesthetically. The tooltips, I don't know if you noticed or not. For instance, like a big tooltip like this. Um, it's its like a black transparent window. It's normally like this marble texture and you, you, don't, you can't see through it. Um, and I just think it's like a real big eyesore, especially when you have like really big tooltips like this. So I've modded it actually just to be, just to be clear. That's all, that's all I've ever modded, but I just thought I'd mention it because I was just thinking here, the green on black. But I feel like now you can see green on black way better over here. But I don't know. I might um, update more stuff to do with the UI a little bit later. There is a, a mod for better UI. Uh, I think it's a Gamanid. I, I can't remember the name. Something like that is the guy who makes it. <clears throat> I personally don't like it, but a lot of people do. So you should go check that out and see if it's to your taste. But uh, just in case people thought they might bring that up, I don't like it personally. But a lot of people do. There's some really good functionality in there, but overall the aesthetics are just something I don't like. But there's some great functionality where they sh he shows extra information in certain places and then things like that. So um, worth worth having a look at, I think. Uh, okay, so we lost our auger, so we need a new one, and we're just gonna get Bal Hano Hanid because although he's much better suited to oratory. This guy's 11 zeal. Oh, he's about to die anyway. It's a shame. He'd be great. He'd be a great auger. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll just put this guy in just to appease the families for now. Okay. Still no pirates. Apparently not. 109,000 manpower. Growing pretty nicely now. Pretty happy about that. And we have just about 40 income still. I look forward to seeing these get done. Don't know if I should... I guess I should wait to get a technology. So what technology would we get? There was some here for making people happier. Like slave output 5%. So it's basically a 5% modifier on 60... On tax for 60. So it's like a little bit more money. Tribesman output as well. So how many tribesmen do we even have? Uh, 430 of them. It's quite a bit. Alright, pirates are on the move. Don't know if we'll catch them in time, but we'll try. Oh shit, there's a few of them. Alright. Bodes Badona. Get ready. It's your time to shine. You just received word that pirates have struck on the coast of Italy. In the Mare Tyrenum. He has to wait for the men to build up his morale a bit. And then come out and try to catch these guys. They're coming straight through. Oh no, they've just gone away. Damn. So they've returned. But these ones are still active. So let's go chase now then. 41 of their ships. So yeah, they're hitting us. Oh, they also just hit us at Ziz, it said. Oh, maybe I missed that. Uh, Jub Badana, he was the governor, wasn't he? He's the head of the Badanids. Oh, yeah, he was the governor. It didn't say he was the governor, I don't think. Unless it did and I missed. So now we have... Uh, space in the region of Italia. <clears throat> uh, we could get a minor character in there. Best man for the job. Let's go. 
Bomokal Ugarid, our previous Safet. Very pious man. Have to maybe change his policies around at some point. Although he's... I don't really want to do it with somebody who's old. We'll get a young governor in there to change their policies, because that way they'll stick around for longer. This is why this guy is so great. Hostus. Um, because he's just been, you know, converting for such a long time here. Okay, our buildings are finishing as well, which is nice. We can finally get some stuff. Let's see. Import value 10%. Our export value is 30%. Import value is nothing. So if we were to look at imports, so the origins would have to be not our country. Do we have that many? Not really. We're kind of exporting a bit more, so I don't know if I need to go with that just yet. Slave output. I'm going to go with the slave output. Yeah, it's improved our income by like six, so that's not bad. Shit, they might get away from us here. Melkashart. Uh, Malkarth Shama Igorid died at the age of 80. The Igorids seem to pop up a lot, but they're not a family, uh, a main family. Now, this is dangerous because we're not great on morale. We're not great on morale, but the month is about to tick, so we'll see. So, what do we got? We got Himilco Gizgo. Now, he was the slave that we had in the last episode that kind of rose up. Uh, so we can have him take this spot. Because he's level 11. I said he'd be good for research. Whereas the Magistrate could now be that guy we just removed. Although I don't see him anymore. That's strange. He was level 10, I thought. So I don't know where he's gone, but it doesn't really matter. Get one of the Tarquini eyes in there for a while. This guy has cancer and he's 56% health. But he'll do a decent job for a little while, I'm sure. Although maybe I should really get better at training up the young because I keep putting old people in office and then they die and you're not getting the most bang for your buck because their statesmanship is low. Alright, let's see what happens. So we gained some extra morale back. We're up to about 70% morale. Looks like we will catch these guys. They are a level 11. Oh no, so are we though. We have Bodes Bedona. Come on, man. Let's see this. I want to see this, this guy kick some ass. Let's get the Octair in the primary. Which we're not allowed to do for some reason. Why is that? That's bullshit. Oh, are you serious? I can't do it because we're Carthage and they don't recognize the fact that I have other ships. That sucks. Surely the Octarius should go first. See, I can only ever recruit these four. It probably just doesn't count this one. That's bullshit. Oh well. Be interested to see where they put the Octarius then. In you go, son. Bad tactics. Not good for his one of his first battles at sea. He's got a lot to learn, but he's... What the hell just happened? Oh my god, there's like another fleet of 45 here. Thankfully, they don't work together. Alright, yeah, he's doing it. He's doing it. The damage is being done by the heavies in the center. We can see them. Okay, we didn't lose any heavies. That's excellent. We want to maybe send them back home now. Now, what did we gain? We gained six and three. Not bad. So he won his first naval battle. Congratulations. Against an equally skilled commander. And to be honest, with similar types of ships. But he did have a bit more. Okay, that's going to give him a little bit of popularity, which is what we want. We want him gaining that popularity. He's already got good prominence. And if we can make him more popular, him leading this faction means that more people are likely to consider him. Holy shit, the election is rigged right now for just um, populists have to do an endorsement of the military. So there he goes, but we have to give chase. Actually, they're coming back. They're coming straight back. Let's follow them that way. Uh, Decius Blossius died. He's the Shafat. Yeah, so you have to stop putting old people in these positions. Drusus Blossii. See, I'd want someone for military to give conviction to us, but we'll just go with Drusus again. He was a Shafat before. He's got good statesmanship. Take him down. Nice. Took them all down. Gained three ships. Destroyed the man. Alright, let's uh, push into here for now. Actually, we'll go to Olbia Razna. 
with our 68 ships and we'll just sit there for a while and heal them up. Although it looks like we're going to be engaged in another battle. Hopefully we don't lose our main ships. I just want to check their health. And 40%, so that's pretty low. Shit. Hopefully they'll be okay. Hopefully they'll be okay or they'll just retreat. These heavy ships are all we have. <laughs> Alright, let's just give chase to him so we can chase him down and kill them. Take what's remaining. I should have checked actually what we won and lost there. So this time we took on three more ships. We had 68 at the beginning, now we have 65. So that wasn't too worth it because we were so damaged. So we'll just we'll just pull back in. We'll stop paying the fleet now. Now we're making almost 50 income. Oh my god, we're rich! Okay, so they'll just heal up. He did great though. He did great. Gotta give it to him. What's he up to now? 17 popularity. It's alright. Provoking Eshmantnatian. I don't know why he's doing that. He's gained himself some money. Loyalty is going down. Which, like I said, I, I worry about this guy, to be honest. Because he's so young and ambitious. Uh, so, we've gotten all of these guys ready to go. If we wait one more month, we can begin some integrations. And then we can also pay some... Uh, gifts, maybe, for Emporia. So, there we go. Alright, so, Leptus Miner. Start the integration. Thapsus. Start the integration. And what's the deal with this? So the religious people and the civics are gaining, gaining loyalty with these decisions. That's great. They're loving it. Tripolitania. Start the integration. And then Emporia. Give them a gift. Oh, I added that up wrong before, didn't I? Okay, um, so yeah, now we can just start an integration on the next month with them as well. And we have all these buffs to integration speed right now. We have the this one here, which is gaining 0 0.20. We have our current... Uh, do we not have an integration number here? Oh, I thought we did. It's a fabrication one. And then we have our diplomacy anyway as well, which is going to be giving us 0.25. So we're gaining 0.95 per month on the integration. So it's 24 months, basically, and we get these. That's uh, within two years. Trade hub developing the little-known city of Kartan has been gathering quite a reputation as a hub of free trade. People of all origins are beginning to flock here in order to sell their wares in our land. Whilst this is clearly a benefit to us, we should consider how best to maximize our advantage. Encourage them. So where is Katan? Kartan. Oh, it's here. Pronounce a slave market. Promote continued investment. Yeah, let's do that. I don't need any extra pops here necessarily. We just want more growth over time. Okay. So we're missing the fourth class of ship completely. If we wanted to have a balanced kind of build there. So I'm just trying to think what we need to do with our money. I guess we could just keep getting technologies now that we're making really good money. 50 per month. You know, it takes like eight months to get a technology. One that we can buy. And if, as when our integrations finish, this is going to go up even more. So we kind of want to get them while they're cheaper. Tribesman output is pretty tempting to do. So I think I'll do that. Wrong culture happiness, 2%. We'll do that, actually, because we've got a lot of that. So we're on 49.90. I'd like to see how this is going to change at the end of next month. 5, 4, 3, 2. Senatorial resistance. Masinissa... Oh yeah, we should keep an eye, actually. One year until election. Uh, has proven to be a contentious candidate as Safet, previously an outspoken critic of the government. He was spoken of with contempt during meetings of the Senate. With such underwhelming popularity amongst the elite, it's hard to see how he'll get anything done. Oh, balls. We got a new ruler because... Yadamilk Eshbalid died. Ah, oh, this changes everything. So we're after getting a populist in power. Is that the first time that's happened? It might be. Because our boy died. And the religious guys are up running up next. 
but the election is still going to be five years. So now our elections are offset, which is really annoying. They're going to happen on the year 509 on the 28th of September. Hmm. That's so annoying. It's not the 1st of October anymore, so I'll always have to keep that in mind. That it's September... Uh, it's September 04 or 09. We'll always be thinking of. Okay. But our Kosafet, is he the same? I actually can't remember. Surely not, right? Because if, if he was the same, then he's he's been in power for nine years. Because his re election is also the same. Maybe it is. I don't know. I can't remember. Either way, Populist is in power, so that sucks. So our little building cost uh, price reduction is gone. Oh, no, the building cost price reduction is still there, but the uh, national tax modifier is gone. So the money's going to drop, actually, by 20% for taxes. Um, so, do we upset the bouncer? Do we say, bring him to heal? Vague threats never hurt anyone. We'll say, okay. It's not worth upsetting the bounce just yet. So who is this guy, man? I never really look at the populists. Why is he so populist? He just is. Nefarious tendencies. I don't like him. It's not bad for the charisma, though, at least, which is good. And he's befriending Dido. That guy looks messed up. Milk appeals Bodona. And is he from... He's from the Bodona family. Okay. Okay. And what can we do now? We can empower the populist faction. You can only do that when populists are in power. And it reduces the populist faction influence by 0.50. It's pretty considerable. So you basically just like heavily negate them. This guy is 10 oratory. Damn, so they have a really good speaker leading their kind of faction right now. So we'll do this as well. That'll help negate it a bit in future. How much else we can do then? Alright, well, we'll keep an eye on it, I suppose. So what's the current health status of these guys? They're both healthy. Bountiful harvest. So, uh, word has arrived that there's exceptionally good harvest in the territory of Hippana. Whilst the merchants may be holding their heads in their hands, people rejoice at the plummeting price of bread. <laughs> oh my god, we should perhaps limit the, the drop in price. So do you want 3 stability or 500 gold? I'll take the 500 gold, for sure. 10 support for the mercantile faction, awesome. That's amazing. <laughs> what a good event to hit. Excellent. Okay. So now we have the money for another one. And another one. Army recovery. Ruler popularity gain. That's actually pretty good for republics. I'll go with the tribesman output though. Just trying to improve the output of all our citizens. Just to make more money. That negative that twenty percent drop though from not having the civics anymore is such a pain. Lost a lot of income that way. A parlous state. There exists in Carthage a general feeling of dissatisfaction at the financial practices of this guy. Um, and who is he? He's the Augur. Malicious rumors circulate, painting a wild picture of the hordes of gold jealously squirreled away in the national treasury. This event has occurred due to having an advisor with low statesmanship. Who's the advisor? What's, the, what's an advisor? I mean, he's the lowest statesmanship, so I guess they consider the auger a type of advisor. I guess everyone in office is an advisor, sort of. Anyway, uh, he loses 10 popularity. We'll have to go with that one. I'm not going to pay 200 gold. It would be nice, but no. I'm not going to pay that much for that. Uh, so how's the interrations going? They're about a quarter of the way done, or a fifth of the way done. Except for uh, Emporion, which I forgot to do. So let's do that one now. Ooh. We'd have to force it through a tyranny. Why are they divided on this? It seems pretty... Seems to have a lot of backing, if you ask me. The merchants don't back it at all. Country is importing from Target. So let's cancel our imports. With Emporia. And what's their flag? Okay. We're importing fish. We're importing salt. It's a bit silly that you can game it this way. 
but like I get the logic in a way where it's like, oh, we're not importing anything with them. Yeah, sure, integrate them. But you could understand then, yeah, look, it's it's a positive now. You could understand that like senators would be like, well, they're they're open for importing or something. I don't know. It just seems a bit unfair that you can just do that. If you were never importing from them, I would get it. Then it'd be like, oh yeah, sure, integrate them. But it's like we were. You should you should remember that, especially when it's so recent. But okay, integration anyway. I digress. I mean, that's a very minor little thing. I can understand why that's hasn't been thought of, maybe, or just isn't bothered with. They don't bother with that kind of thing. 123k. Unrivaled wealth. Uh, the recent passing of Yadamilk Eshbalid uh, has caused widespread interest among the Senate and amongst our population at large. His considerable fortune is of such magnitude. This is awesome because he did have like three grand when we last looked before. Even after settling the various debts that he owed, the num that number that a number of claimants have come forward, hoping to secure themselves a windfall. One such claimant, Boster Hanid, has the support of a number of wealthy patricians from around our Carthage. From around our Carthage, and is widely considered to be the rightful heir to the fortune, even though he's a different family. Nonetheless, we must make a decision. So this guy's going to get a thousand, or we can say split it equally amongst the claimants, including the state. I think you got to do that. Now, who is this guy? He's a populist, head of the Hanid family. Not good to have any low loyalty with him, but he'll be on 47. Is his loyalty gaining or losing? He's losing. He's a losing. He's a scorned family. Well, if he doesn't have money, he doesn't have power, right? We'll get the 100 for ourselves. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see what we can do with him, though. Head of the Hanid family, eh? A populist. Can you believe it? He does have considerable power. Well, we'll just make sure that your family is happy. I'm loving the fact that the Belossii family is thriving. There's lots of little babies being born. So that's good. It's great to see. So let's look for where we have minor characters. So this is a minor character. And he's not really doing much. So let's see if we can get uh, someone who's scorned in a Hanid. This guy is awful. There's no one. There's literally no one left like for jobs. That's a Hanid. What else is he good at? Five finesse. Maybe he could be the doctor. It's a little bit better suited to that. Now they're not scorned and hopefully our co-ruler won't be so pissed off. Maybe next month. Oh, they're still scorned. Oh, did I remove a hand at doing that? Oh, I might have. Maybe. Um, okay. Hmm, I really don't know. Other than... I need to change the music again. Sorry, my bad. Other than a governor, I'm not sure who else I could get. So this is a... The governor of Italia is a minor character. So is the governor of Numidia. And he's not a great governor. So let's have a look at Numidia then. There's a Hanid here. That's the guy I just removed, I guess. Yeah, okay. We'll pop him in here. Now you shouldn't be scorned after the next tick. So just wait for that. There we go. Now he's plotting quietly, which is heavily lowering his loyalty, which is so annoying. What does corruption do for us? We're at 20 corruption on our ruler. Pop migration speed and populist influence has increased. That sucks. They're both 10 corrupt. Um, we'll have to bribe him just to keep his loyalty up and leave him for now because sometimes it gives you these events like you get like close to 50 loyalty and then it gives you an event and stacks you lower I hate those because it knows that it's like well if you choose this he's going to become disloyal this thing this cost is constantly going up now as well Nash tribes will now put again That's a 10% output now. All right, God, this has been such an internally managey episode, but I mean, we are going to get like a nice batch of territory actually, so it should be, it should look nice when we're done with it. Um, still don't have the means to colonize this area. We need 10 pops in a place like this. That's our culture, but we've only got one of our culture now. The assimilation pro process is so slow. 
His health is 23. So when that governor dies and we put a new one in, then we'll start putting all the new policies down. It's tempting to do them here, though. Because this place is now pretty much our religion entirely. Yeah, it basically is. So we should start doing that. So now we'll go cultural assimilation, cultural assimilation, and cultural assimilation. That's pop assimilation speed four. So now they're at 3%. Yeah, great. Okay, cool. Hang on, I spotted a little navy. A little pirate navy out there. There it is, 12 ships. Right outside of Carthage. Oh my god, if they sack Carthage, that'd be so fucking annoying. Trying to catch up with them with our fleet. Yeah, they raided us down here. Are they gonna move, I wonder? We're gonna come through the storm and fight them. We didn't have full morale, but we've got way more ships than them, so we should be able to just smash through them. Okay, we gained one popularity, basically. And they're heading further into the storm. I think we can handle it, so we'll chase them. Just that little bit of extra popularity. Okay, cool. Nothing crazy there. Let's dock at Carthage for now. 19 popularity. He's getting a little bit more popular. He's investing. He's got some money. I want this guy to rule eventually. He's the party leader. Let's throw him an endorsement while our stability is falling. I would imagine... Oh, you know what? He's too young to rule. <laughs> I just realized that. You need to be like 35. And he's only 24. So he actually can't rule for like 10 years. That's a pretty good point. But let's see if we can create some more militarists. I think by endorsing the faction, there's also an increased chance that people will become militarists. I don't know. Or is it just through having military actions? I'm not sure. And High, high Marshal is what pulls people towards it. Uh, Granaries raided. We had this one before, so we'll just do this one. It's not a big deal. That's in Italy as well, or at least the governorship of Italia. All right, we're up to 17 out of 27 for the integrations. Seven, Triple Italian is a big one, though. That one's going to take a long time. It's just the city-states are the small ones. So those two aren't going to be complete this episode, but the, these two small ones here will be. And we could maybe begin the uh, A Tale of Four Cities, getting that extra commerce value. And at least we're improving our infrastructure and actually getting technologies now, which I think is good. Although I wonder now, maybe now I think we should start reinvesting this money back into building up our cities and co um, commerce. So let's build a couple more libraries here, another marketplace, which is what I wanted, and some temples. Cool. So now here is where I want to invest in next. Hang on, let's just remove that. Let's change to this. Because we still have the building cost modifier on, actually, don't we? Yeah, until 507. So not for very much longer, for a year. So we should use... I should have actually not been getting technologies at all. That was silly of me. Thinking about it, to be more efficient and actually use that money wisely, it would be better just to get the better, the cheaper buildings. Uh, so I'm going to go with libraries on all the... Uh, places with ports. The reason for that is because you want more citizens where there's going to be more commerce, which is at ports. Ports get a 10% to commerce. Uh, they should do. I don't see its modifier there. Uh, oh, that's really weird. I don't know why it doesn't... S that's... Oh, sorry. Th What? Ports always have 10% more commerce. I mean, I've always known them to have that. Unless they changed it. I don't know why they would do that. Maybe I'm not looking at something right. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I'm pretty sure, though. Anyway, whatever. I'll look at it later. Trade hub developing the little-known city of Tarquinii. has been gathering quite a reputation as a hub of free trade. So it encouraged more merchants from ab abroad. Uh, we got this before. I get, this time I'll actually put the citizens in there. Let's build them a little library for now. Epirus wants salt. 
Our money has fallen down a little bit now. We're only making 31. Oh, we're still paying the fleet, aren't we? That's why. There we go. Great. Man, there's massive storms across the Mediterranean right now. Pirate fleet out here, but just can't do anything about it. Have to leave it do its thing. Pirates. Pirates, pirates, pirates. Oh, nice. We can colonize this. Let's go. Oh, yes. Look at that. Solidified. Nice coastline. That's nice. That just kind of happened gradually. Looking good. Looking damn fine. Lusonia growing quite big. I wonder are Rome and Macedon going to butt heads again. Egypt looked like they're collapsing. Oh yeah, look at that. Dodecachinos has reappeared. Kush has taken out a bunch of territory. Cyrene is being occupied by Phrygia. So Phrygia looked like they're going to get an even more coastline. Interesting. Out of all the ones to fall apart, I wouldn't have thought it would be Egypt. The integration of Leptis Minor. Yeah, so do we want to take on some of these guys? Probably. Um, three characters. Wait. Oh, they have the same family names as me. That's why I got confused for a second. Oh, interesting. See, the thing is, you don't know what characters you're going to get. We're going to get Maharbal Bodonna and then two others from his family. I'll go with Barca, and then we'll leave it at that. Can't just take anyone, you know. And then they die. Uh, so that was Leptis Minor. This is Tarentum. Yes, this is useful. And what's your problem? Negative four broke tribute. Oh yeah, that was a long time ago. 34 increase to that. Maybe in future we can get them, but I don't know. I would have hoped that that, that kind of client state, or uh, that kind of ally would be willing to be a client state, because they're only one city, so our potential strength I would have thought would be quite strong. Versus theirs. Uh, so the next one to occur is going to be Thapsus, which is happening right now. So that's Thapsus done. And we can welcome in... That guy's 81 years old. Holy shit already killed his all his children like I, I hate the way it does that man like let me just choose and pick the car I mean I guess that's too powerful uh, we can get more giz goes in okay so that's Thapsus and Leptis minor integrated so nice solid coastline here now at by Satis. A lot of cities here now. It's all just like cities. So we could do with investing into them. People want to take our exports from these areas as well now. We could now probably remove these forts. I mean, it's a bit extreme having so many. They were built originally for some missions. And there are four out of five buildings anyway, so we can't really do much. Yeah, I think I'll probably go through this on my own and decide where I'm going to build things. But I want to just basically build libraries and... Oh, you know what we also need in these places is probably the... Uh, theaters for the assimilation, now thinking about it. This is already Punic. So we'll leave that. But anyway, these these like little buildings and stuff, that should all just add up to be a little bit more money overall in the long term. Uh, and once pop promotions occur and demotions occur and the, the classes kind of sort themselves out, we should end up with more citizens and better tech rates and all of that. So that's what I'm hoping for. Uh, Igorus Igor died at the age of 80. Uh, what was he? He was a researcher for the martial advances. 
The problem I have is as well, we have a lot of people who are just like 100% populist and they're like never going to change. <laughs> and I don't know why it's like 100 conviction. You know, he's got, like why? Look at it, he's 12 charisma. He should be like a super good um, mercantile guy. It's just a shame. I think I took them on from like another family or something. Yeah, I guess because the Etrurians. Maybe he was a previous party leader or something. But I feel like there's a lot of characters like that. Anyway. So yeah, he's way more... He's actually a great character. 8, 6, 12, and 9. Really strong. It's just such a shame he's a populist. Um, but yeah, I'm going to put him in government, actually. He'd be well suited to... He'd be way more suited to being a magistrate. And build up a statesmanship over time. So how's it looking? We're halfway to the next election. These guys have 1.21 conviction. 0 0.9, 0 0.3, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.5. So they still have the most. Because we don't have that many characters with good oratory leading the parties. Alright, no scorned characters anyway, which is good. Bomokal Igorid has died. Oh, he was the governor of Italia. Nice. Okay, so that means now we can get this guy in and then activate a bunch of policy changes up here to start our religion taking hold. So what I'll do is actually just do it this way. And then we'll need to build temples. So let's go micro builder, we'll go temple. And just slam them down in cities. And that should help with the conversions up there, take hold. It'll take a long time though still. But once we start getting a few, then yeah, 2% is not too bad now actually. All right, I don't know how people feel about these episodes. I know, that I feel like they're slow. I don't know, I'm probably just hard on myself. Um, but I just feel like they're a little bit slow because I'm just like so heavily looking at numbers. I'm probably not doing things like optimally either because I'm just not that kind of player. But I'm doing what I think kind of makes the most sense without spending ages looking at it like crunching numbers. Um, so apart from that, you know, we've got some active diplomacy going on with Tarentum. We're improving their... Uh, oh yeah, that's what we could do. The Tale of the Four Cities. The Phoenician cities to the south on the coast of Bysatis. Abyssitis have long been close to allies of ours. In order to strengthen our hold in the area, it might be time to bring them over, bring them even closer in the bosom of, Car of Carthage. So basically, after you've integrated all of the all of the dudes out this way, you can just take these, uh, you can just straight up get this little mission done with 10% commerce value, recently acquired ports. So that's nice. Uh, I think there's another one for Carcassonne, isn't there? I think there is somewhere, but I don't know. Oh, I think it's the Wicked Sisters. Yeah, because we already integrated Utica. Uh, but it also wants us to integrate Kirkusone, Kirkone. Which I guess I forgot to do. So we'll do that as well. And then in the next episode, we will be able to do the Wicked Sisters, which will also give us commerce value 10% in the province of Carthago, which is actually quite powerful. And then we're going to start thinking about maybe building up our military a bit more, gearing our military up for an attack on the African tribes and stuff and seeing how that goes. The problem at the moment is, is if we take Musulamia in as a client, uh, we go over our limit. So I'll have to do something with one of these, like just let them go or see if we can finally integrate them at some point, get them as a client. But it just doesn't seem like I can. I just see, I can't seem to figure out a way to do it. We, we raised their opinion to 200 that one time and it still wasn't enough, you know? So I thought we'd be more powerful now with all of this. But it just still doesn't seem like it. So I have to think about that. It's kind of slowing me down a bit over there. That's nice. So how many provinces and territories are we up to now? 221. So we're still gaining territories every single episode. We got that colon we got two from colonization and two or three from integrations. We got one from colonization over here as well. Uh, but yeah, so that's pretty much it. Alright, so thank you very much for watching guys, and I will see you in the next one.